Yo, what's going down everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston, and today we have Around the League episode 13 featuring the Brooklyn Nets, and today I'm facing uh, one of my friends, Mike, or Mike and Robot Dog, 45 Dog, whatever his YouTube channel is now, I don't know, I'll try to link in the description if I can remember, but anyway, uh, so today I'm using the Brooklyn Nets, he's using the Dallas Mavericks, hmm. and uh, anyway, let's just get straight into this, I'm uh, done stalling. So, uh, Brooklyn Nets, uh, obviously first year in Brooklyn, you know, a lot of new energy surrounding this team, at least there was coming into the year, uh, new pieces in uh, Joe Johnson, and then, you know, big role players like CJ Watson and Andre Blatch, and guys like that, and uh, they re-signed Darren Williams, which is huge for them, and this is a team that although they didn't add too, too much, they were a good team on paper last year that suffered because of injuries, and, um, you know... You know, after they traded for Gerald Wallace and they got him for a very good deal, I don't remember the exact stipulations of getting him, but, uh, you know, Gerald Wallace is a solid player, but I'll get into him in a second. You know, this, this team has built a good core. Uh, Brook Lopez has really progressed this season. I mean, it's been pretty cool to watch, but uh, anyway, so let's just kind of go get into this team player by player. Uh, Darren Williams, not Darren Williams. I could say a lot about this guy, but I don't want to spend too much time on him. Obviously, great, great point guard, seventh year in the league out of Illinois, drafted in 2005. Um, you know, he's good, but his last two years arguably have been his worst of his NBA career. Sh sh shooting, he's down to 40%. Uh, you know, he's just, it seems like that that ankle injury, those, those bone spurs, I believe, might be uh, costing him. You know, playing in the Olympics probably cost him a little bit. He just seems tired. Uh, he played in uh, Turkey, I believe, before the NBA lockup was over. So he was tired from last year to, you know, playing more than an 82-game schedule. Actually, no, I believe he only played a few games in Turkey, but but the same at the same time, he was playing basketball, basically, during the lockout when a lot of people were getting rested up. And then he played a very compressed six-game schedule, didn't have much time to rest in the offseason by playing in the Olympics, and now he's back playing another 82-game schedule for the Brooklyn Nets. So he's a guy who's tired, obviously. It's very clear. Um, and those bone spurs in his ankles seem to be really hurting him. And he's just struggling. I mean, he's not playing how he used to play. He's definitely not in consideration for the best point guard in the league anymore. I don't even think he's a top five point guard. He's probably a top ten point guard, but that's still up in the air. And we'll see. Anyway, he's having a down year. I think he really needs to pick it up if this team has any chance of going anywhere. Now, Joe Johnson, their main piece they acquired in the offseason. Six foot seven shooting guard, great scorer. He's had a down year at the start of the year, but he's started to pick it up a little bit recently. He's been that isolation scorer that a lot of Nets fans really saw him being when they traded for him and uh you know he's got a huge contract but the nets can clearly afford it they can clearly afford to go over the luxury tax considering that brooklyn's one of the biggest basketball markets in the nba right now they pretty much sell out every game they have a richest crate hella rich owner in uh Prokhorov, Mikhail Prokhorov, I believe his name is, and obviously Jay-Z is pretty rich himself. Uh, you know, that team is very profitable, so they don't have any concerns about going over the luxury tax or anything like that. Um, now, Gerald Wallace is another big piece for that team. They re-signed him in the office into a four-year, about $40 million deal. I'm not sure if it was exactly $40 million, but it's around that. Um, he, you know, he's a big piece. He's a great defender. He can score a little bit. He's not the greatest three-point shooter. Uh, he can score a little bit, but his main thing is rebounding, hustling, playing defense. Uh, he's a guy who's averaged over two steals and two blocks a game before for a season or two in his career. And he's just that type of player. He's a hustle player. He's gritty. He's a guy that I think every kind of NBA team needs. Uh, he's similar to a Reggie Evans that, you know, both of those guys aren't very skillful. That, But um, they just they hustle. They play hard. They play smart. And uh, both of them are, have, able, have been able to make solid NBA careers out of themselves, especially Joe Wallace, who was great on some of those old Bobcats teams. But anyway, Chris Humphreys uh, came into the year as the starting small, or not small forward, power forward. I believe he's been moved to the bench a little bit. He's been pretty inconsistent. Uh, his last two years, he'd been very solid, averaging double-double. But just because of the fact that they've added Joe Johnson, he's, his touches have gone down. Brooklyn's Lopez being healthy, uh, his rebounds have gone down a little bit. He's not a great shot blocker. He's a decent defender. But, you know... He's just, he is what he is. You're not going to get anything more than him. You're probably not going to get anything less. He's a double-double threat, but that's about it. You know, I, I mean, he's solid. That, I, that's all I can say about him. Now, Brooke Lopez is a guy who I've been have heavily criticized before, but he has really proved me wrong this year. Um, his rebounding is much improved. He's a 7-footer. He still needs to rebound the ball a little bit more, but he just reminds me of Dirk Nowitzki at this point, honestly. Neither of them are great rebounders for their careers. Uh, both 7-footers who can use their height alone to get 7 to 8 rebounds a game. I don't know exactly where Brook is at this point in the season, but I think he's upwards of six or seven. 
you know, so he's working on it a little bit. You know, if he's he, if he can rebound the ball as much as Dirk Nowitzki did, and then keep guys like Chris Humphries and Joel Wallace there, then I think his rebounding will be okay. Especially when they have a guy like Reggie Evans off the bench, who I believe has actually gotten some starts recently, and is a guy who can at any night put up like 20 rebounds a game. It's ridiculous. But anyway, so Brook Lopez is rebounding deficiency, so to say. Um, you know, it's not it's it's not a big deal, but uh, he definitely needs to improve it. I think anyway. Um, he, I, I think he's still developing. His shot blocking has been very good. I think he's averaging over two blocks a game this season. That's very good to see. So even though his rebounding has not been very good, his d defensive ability has stepped up. Uh, he's a great offensive low post player. I think he's a great center in the league. I think he could be a top five center in the NBA uh, if he isn't already, which I, I think he might be. I, I'd have to spit out five centers off the top of my head that I can't really think of. But anyway, uh, let's get into some of the bench players. Uh, I really like Reggie Evans. He's just a solid, gritty role player for any team. You know, any team could use him. Uh, Marshawn Brooks is a scorer who hasn't really found his rhythm yet this year, but he had a solid rookie season last year, looking like a very good late first-round pick, actually drafted by the Celtics, when that was Delford Juwan Johnson. Andre Blatchman, this guy has a world of talent. Uh, he blames the Washington Wizards for kind of not letting him develop so well, but I think that that Nets coaching staff is really helping him out, and uh, he's really looking good so far. Toko Shengelia, Mirta Toledovic, two guys to added in the offseason from Europe. I really like Toledovic. He's a great scorer. He showed it the other night when he dropped like 15 or 20 points, I think, something like that. I hit a few threes. Really good stretch four. And uh, Shengelia, I really haven't heard much about him. I haven't seen much about him. But Jerry Stackhouse, he's provided more than they thought he was going to provide. He really was brought in as a veteran clubhouse leader, but he's really looked good so far from three-point range. CJ Watts is a great backup point guard. And uh, I really don't know much about Damian James, to be quite honest. He's been on the team for a while. But he's young, so maybe they can make something out of him. That's pretty much it for their team. Oh, Keith Bogans, too. A good three-point shooter, good guy off the bench. I think he's pretty solid. I really like P.J. Carlissimo. I don't know if he's a championship coach, but I think he's a good one for now. They'll have to see what they have in him. He was in a situation before in Oklahoma City where he had a good group of young talent. He just couldn't put it together. And Scott Brooks took the reins from him and now has developed that team into a championship contender. But I, th I like Carlos Moe as a coach. I think they should run with him for at least the rest of the year and then readdress him in the offseason. But anyway, oh, Tyshawn Taylor, too. I forgot about him. Good point guard. Loved him at Kansas. Um, rookie. He's, you know, he's been inconsistent at times, but he's also been good at times. So we'll have to see what they have in him. But anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about this team. Uh, I think this team could win a playoff series or two. I don't see them doing much more than that. But it's a solid team. I'd put them on the same level as maybe Denver Nuggets or Golden State Warriors. But anyway, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me. So I thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy. And so I'm out. Peace.